This video is sponsored by Stream. Build high quality, flexible chat experiences in your iOS app with the Stream SDK. Get started for free with the link in the description down below. What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be learning how to use will set in your properties in an iOS app. So instead of going through the theory about what the heck will set is, I think it's a lot more valuable to jump right into the code. So drop a like down below, hit subscribe, and let's talk about the will set feature of properties in Swift. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new Xcode project. I'm gonna stick with the app template under iOS and we're gonna call this project will set, super creative, I know. We'll go ahead and continue. Make sure you're set to storyboard, not Swift UI, and you'll see why momentarily. Go ahead and save it wherever you'd like. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this right panel, expand my Xcode window, and we're gonna jump into our view controller. So right off the bat, we need a property that we can use the will set feature on. So I'm gonna create a private property here and we should spell it correctly, otherwise it won't work. It's gonna be a var, so it's immutable. Maybe we'll go ahead and call this text and it's gonna be of type string. By default, it's gonna be called default. Now to use the will set feature, we're gonna go ahead and put curlies at the end of this. Kinda looks like a computed property, but not quite. And inside of here, we can go ahead and say will set. Now, if you caught my recent video on did set, this is very similar, however, slightly different, given the fact it's will instead of did. Now, instead of uh, going through theoretical explanations, let's hook up a label that we're gonna add to our uh, UI, and we'll see what will set can actually do and why you would possibly wanna use it. So we can go ahead and say that we have a label here. It's a UI label. We'll go ahead and create it with an XY 200, maybe a height of 50. Gonna go ahead and add it as a sub view to our view controller's view. We'll also go ahead and set the text here to our text property up above. And let's see, we'll also go ahead and say label.center is view.center. And I'm also gonna go ahead and update the text alignment like so. Let me go ahead and set this label as a global and move it out here. And let's go ahead and give this a run in a 12 Pro Max simulator. So essentially what we're doing is creating a label, you know, assigning its text, nothing too fancy whatsoever. Now the beauty of the will set aspect of a property is not only do you get access to, whoops, looks like I used the wrong simulator there. Not only do you get access to the particular value, what we call new value, uh, that was set to the element, to the property, but you can also access the current value. Now what I mean by that is you can go ahead and before the updated property value is set, you can get the prior value. Let's say you need to save it for whatever reason. And the reason that's powerful is because it gives you a split second in time where you can save the prior value. Now let's see what I mean by that. So I'm gonna print it out to get started. We're gonna say will set and it's, uh, we're gonna say will space set. First of all, we have the old value, which is the current text. And then we're gonna say the new value, which is the thing that will be set, is simply called new value. Now you might be wondering where this is coming from. So new value, you're gonna get access to inside of this will set curly block, just by virtue of using the will set feature on this property. So let's go ahead and do some, some fancy stuff. So I'm gonna say here in dispatch queue dot main, and we're gonna say async after maybe now plus 10 seconds. What we can go ahead and do is update that text property. So I'm gonna go ahead and say let text or rather self dot text equals iOS Academy uh, updated this. We'll go ahead and give it a run. And ignoring the label for a second, if we take a look and focus in our console down here, we should see in a few seconds, uh, specifically 10 seconds, I should probably make this something like two seconds, we'll see in the console that we get a print from this will set. Now we see it down here. So we can see will sets, the current value is default, which is what we are printing up there. And the new value is going to be what we are about to set it to, whatever the setter is about to set. So this is good and all. Um, let's do an example where we would wanna use this perhaps in a uh, actual application. 
So let's say we want our text label here to reflect the old value and the new value. So what we can do is we can say label dot text is it old colon and we're gonna basically put in text here. And then let's say we have a, a dash here and we can say a new and this is going to be whatever the new value is. So if you've ever seen any applications that are perhaps like banking applications or you know something along the lines of uh, a charting or application that tracks the difference, like a stocks application of the previous and the you know the new price of a stock maybe, they heavily leverage things like will sets to figure out what was the previous value as well as the you know updated value, whatever the setter was called. And like I said, this is very similar to did set. So you can actually have did set and will set in tandem together. And let's add a print in here did update value and take a look at my prior did set video if you're more interested in this and similar to how we get new value uh, in the will set we get old value in did set so here we can actually say this one let's make it simpler we'll say did set and the old value is going to essentially be this guy here and we can also go and get the new value so it looks like it was complaining there for a quick second but looks like it went away and we'll say new value. Now keep in mind, and the, when the did set is called, it's not really the new value anymore, right? It's text at this point. And again, will set and did set are very different, but the reason I wanna do the example here is uh, they are similar in a lot of ways, right? So not only do you see that you have the updated text shown here with the old and the new, but in did set, we see the old value was default and the new value was what we assigned. So will set and did set, features or properties in Swift, very, very simple to use. You can build some really interesting use cases around these two uh, property features. I personally use them a lot more than I can actually think of at the moment. There's a lot of really intricate examples that you can build around this, things like maybe updating some cash value or things like updating some user analytic event. Let's say, you know, the user selected an element in a drop down menu and you wanna know, you know, what was the previous thing that they selected? So the sky's the limit as it goes with most of the things that come to, you know, building out stuff in code, especially for iOS. That is all I've got for you guys today. Nice and short video, super simple yet powerful language feature. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you used Will Set before? If so, what did you use it for? And uh, if you haven't dropped a like down below, make sure to do that. Hit subscribe for more videos. You guys know the spiel. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.